Shall we do a little passage from Twelfth Night if everybody wants to? Emily and Raj, yes. Oh, what do you want? Shall we? Do you want to swap over? I'm sorry if you prepared this one. I didn't. I didn't know that we were selected. Oh, okay. All right. Does somebody else want to have a go? Do you want to have a go? Sure. Yeah. I only have my passage, so mine's on my phone. But okay. You can have one. Really? Oh, yeah. okay. It'd be better if you just read from this. It'd be easier. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there you are. Me too. Yeah. 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 Y
So it's one thing. Don't compare one thing with another. So he does that all the time, doesn't he? Uh, and it, that is a sort of very, um, not a standard rhetorical device, but a, a very useful one um, in getting a clear story across or message across. So remember a lot of the audience for Shakespeare's plays, the ones who are wealthier, they were students, male students, at the Inns of Court. In fact, the private theaters was, was basically where they went. But do you have a level, as we've tried to teach you over the years, there's a level of audience for Shakespeare, from the people who are the groundlings and aren't educated to the people who are studying rhetoric and philosophy. So Shakespeare's got these wonderful layers through there, and as she's arguing very nicely, he's got these rhetorical strategies that he knows the students will find or the people who've been educated in rhetoric. Which was m most people, right? Unless they were the groundlings, yeah. Yeah, the, because we know about Shakespeare's uh, grammar school, and they were taught Latin and Greek and rhetoric and history. Mm -hmm. So rhetoric was very important to them. You know what rhetoric means. It's the art of persuasion, language used to persuade. And there, as Jenny's showing you here, there are different strategies that they use. But you can imagine, I always think of the audience going, yeah, well, that's, oh, I noticed that, what he's doing there rhetorically, the ones who had been the students, for example. Yeah, there's a kind of delight in the play of rhetoric, like, you know, get this pun or get this antithesis. And Ben Johnson used to make fun of his audience. He, he'd actually say in his play, you're too stupid to understand this, but I'm <laughs> Shakespeare never does that. No. He doesn't. He insults the groundlings a bit in Hamlet, but it's funny. <laughs> but, but Ben Johnson so angered his audience once in a play called Poetaster, he wrote an epilogue to it. And he stood up and said, you're too stupid. You students, they were student audience, you're too stupid, you don't appreciate me. They threw things at him, yeah. I'm not joking. And he was never allowed to perform that again, from what we know. And he wasn't allowed to print that end to protest or he insulted the audience. Not a good move for a playwright, right? <laughs> Johnson didn't care, but, but you can see Shakespeare doesn't do that. Yeah. They're not throwing things at Shakespeare at the end of the play. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> All this is about herself, and it's her revealing the most aching heart that she can't reveal. So it's this terrible <laughs> contradiction going on, and it's the most beautiful thing. But let concealment like a wor worm in the bud, so there's a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. There's a worm eating this beautiful rose, right, in the bud of the rose. So um, I think with these lines there's not an, an awful lot of rhetoric, there's not an awful lot of clever fireworks in the lines, there's not even a, an awful lot of alliteration or assonance, it's just that you have to take them as clearly as you can because it's so beautiful and have you all got tissues? <laughs> <Because> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and don't be afraid of it. I mean, you know, this is this is hu this is about humanity. This is about love. It's just so beautiful. So, when uh, when he says, "And what's her history?" Um, this is her big moment to tell him something she cannot say. So, take it slowly. Take your time. Ask me. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love. But let concealment like a worm if bud feed on her damask cheek, she pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? Beautiful. That's really nice. Well done. Okay. Okay. Now now you're you're trying to recover yourself having made this terrible declaration that wasn't a declaration, right? So you're having to cover yourself and pretend you're all manly again. So. <laughs> we men may say more, swear more, but indeed. Okay, sorry. We men may say more, swear more, but indeed. Get the rhythm. Say more, swear more. There's the alliteration. Let it carry you through. We men may say more, swear more, but indeed. Our shows are more than will still we prove much in our vows for little in our love but died thy sister of her love my boy i am all the daughters of my father's house and all the brothers too and yet i know not sir shall i to this lady ay that's the theme to her in chaste give her this jewel say 
My love can give no place, bide no delay. Well done, okay, thank you very much.